Okay, it's time to talk about time trial helmets. This is one of my favorite topics. And what we're gonna talk about here is the differences, how to choose a time trial helmet. And for you guys that are into TTing or going fast, we're gonna look at the actual mathematical differences between helmets. In other words, what do you save wearing a time trial helmet versus a road helmet? But let's start first with a little bit of history, yeah? Where does all this helmet development go back to? We probably know that in the 70s, um, Bell was one of the first to develop a bicycle helmet at all. But it wasn't for 10 years until somebody thought, well, we need to develop something aerodynamic that was used really in the tour. And Bernard Hino was one of the first to wear it. And that was the Sinelli Aerolite in 1985. And the Sinelli Aer Aerolite used an aerodynamic shape like this cat-like chrono. This aerodynamic shape, the aerofoil shape, is shown to be particularly aerodynamic compared to a square shape or even a plain round shape. So that development in 1985 was quite important, although it's interesting to note that those early helmets had no safety features. They were purely hard plastic shells designed to capture that aerodynamic performance. Now that was 1985, but in 1986, it was Gyro, Gyro, the American manufacturer, that brought out the Aerohead. And remember, the Aerohead was brought out in 1986 and used by Greg LeMond to win the tour by a very narrow margin a few years later. Now those differences show that even small differences can make a difference in, in cycling. And it's not just for the pro riders, because a very slight difference, if you're on, the, on a course or outside cycling for a long time, can make substantial time saving. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second with a couple of mathematical examples. Okay, so let's ask the question, what is the exact time saving for a TT helmet compared to a regular road helmet? And is there any penalty because of weight, for example? Does the weight factor come into it? Well, let's, let's address weight straight on. A good road helmet has a weight of around 250 to 300 grams. Now all of these TT helmets here have a weight of between 350 and 400 grams. So there is a slight weight deficit of around 100 grams and theoretically that could come into play. But what they do have is that aerodynamic advantage and that's been tested now in multiple wind tunnel tests, both individually by manufacturer, by riders who try to compare lots of different helmets and by companies that are looking to get every single advantage by you know, um, tweaking every possible part. And it turns out that the aero advantage of wearing a full time trial aerodynamic helmet is around about 0 0.01 in terms of CDA. A 0 0.01 is modest, I grant you that. But 0 0.01 is the same effect, roughly, as getting an optimized arm position on the aero bars with the arm pads. It's the same as wearing a long sleeve and long, a long tights, as opposed to shorts and short sleeves. 0 0.01 is modest, but it adds up over time. Okay, so I hear some of you thinking, okay, 0 0.01 in CDA, that's hardly anything, right? Well, have a think about this. When Greg LeMond won the 1989 tour, he was behind Laurent Fignon by 50 seconds coming into that final 15 mile 25K TT. And he ended up winning by eight seconds. He made up 58 seconds. And I would say probably a quarter to a third of that was based on his gyro aerohead helmet. That aerohead helmet that he wore has been relaunched in 2016 and is definitely one of the best TT helmets on the market right now. right on the line as he comes over. We make his defeat eight seconds. Can you believe it? After over 2,000 miles, we've come down to the last Let's put eight into seconds. If you're a 70 kilogram Rodrigo rider Vignon. riding a 10 kilogram bike, that's 80 kilograms altogether. And you're, let's say, a fairly decent cyclist able to sustain 300 watts. Over a 40 kilometer course, you're likely to save around 40 seconds or so wearing the aerodynamic helmet over a typical road helmet. And we can break this down even more because it depends on gradient and it depends on um, rider ability. So let's keep that 300 watt rider, but if they're going downhill, let's say at minus 5%, what is, the, what is the kilometer per hour difference between a TT wearing helmet rider and a road helmet wearing rider where everything else is kept the same? Well, it turns out that at minus 6%, the difference for that 300 watt rider is around about one kilometer an hour. So they're going one kilometer an hour faster because of that helmet alone. Let's reverse it somewhat. What gradient would you have to be at in order to not see an advantage? Well, if the gradient's at zero, it turns out that using those same parameters, and you can test it yourself on computationalcyclist.com, you can test it yourself by putting in the figures that I'm, that I'm suggesting. And it turns out that at zero, at zero gradient, the speed advantage is around about 0.4 kilometers an hour. And you still get a speed advantage at plus one, plus two, plus three. In fact, you have to go to plus 9% incline for there to be no real advantage for a TT helmet. A plus 9% incline, it doesn't really matter whether you wear a regular road helmet or a regular TT helmet. Now, some of you will be asking, that's not realistic over an entire course, because over an entire course, there's lots of undulations. There's lots of undulations. So I plug the model into best bike split, 
and I've chosen a typical TT course and I kept the 300 watt rider and then put in the TT helmet versus the road helmet and let best bike split model it. And sure enough, over that entire ride, the aero helmet, which by the way, had a CDA in that model of 0.26, compared to the road helmet, which had a CDA of 0.27, the aero helmet saved 48 seconds. And that's a double check, if you like, on one side, that the best bike split is showing the same advantage over a typical um, almost 40K TT course with everything house hat held the same. So here's another way to look at it for you guys that are worried about increasing weight for you weight weenies out there. And for these, for you guys doing hill climbs, this is a very interesting question. And the question is, what extra weight would you have to have in order to nullify the effects of wearing an aero helmet? Or to look at it another way, what would the weight of the helmet have to be for there to be no advantage going uphill? And it turns out that at plus 1%, you'd have to have a completely ridiculous 2.5 kilogram helmet or add 2.5 kilograms to the bike to nullify that aerodynamic effect. At plus 2%, you'd have to have a two kilogram helmet. And at plus 3%, you'd have to have a one kilogram helmet. And at plus 4%, even at plus 4%, you'd have to have a helmet that weighs more than 500 grams extra. And that's above the weight of the regular road helmet to nullify the advantage you get from that aerodynamic profile. So then really this is saying that at gradients of nine, eight, seven percent and, and below, it's always an advantage to wear an aero, aero helmet. And if you're a powerful rider able to put out more than 300 watts, that gradient tipping point would actually go up because your speed is that much greater at any given gradient. So if, you're, if your watts are, let's say, 350 watts, probably the tipping point is at 9, 10% rather than at 8, 9%. So, here, so another question I'm asked is, what's the difference between the aero helmet, the full aero helmet, and the aero road helmet? So over the last three to four years, we've seen most of the bike helmet designers come out with an aero road helmet. Well, really, the Aero Road helmet is a bit like these models that were exemplified by Team Sky working with Cask when they brought out the 2012 Cask Bambino. Now, the Cask Bambino is really a road helmet design with minimal venting and just a slight extension of the tail, which is cut off and rounded. And the reason for that is if you're wearing a full um, teardrop Aero helmet and you look down, you immediately have this sail effect with the tail up in the air. And that causes a 0.3 change in the CDA. So you get a deterioration actually compared to wearing no helmet at all or to compared to the road helmet. And given that most riders who are not riding a short TT are not able to keep that very strict TT position, a lot of riders looking, will be looking around, looking up, looking down. Then the, the full tail it, teardrop helmet is probably not the best one for long rides. So in general, lo on long rides, which are not purely, let's say, a full out TT effort, then Cass came out with this um, Cass Bambino in 2012. It has a typical EPS construction, you know, hard exterior. They say a lot about this Formula One wicking interior. I don't actually see any big advantage of the interior, but it is a nice helmet, albeit one that is around 350 to 400 grams. Arguably, it's been improved somewhat with some later designs like the Pox Cerebral and this Cat-like Rapide. The Cat-like Rapide full TT helmet comes unvented, apart from two tiny vents at the back. It's a very tight fitting helmet. It's still safe, but I believe it's one of the best helmets on the market right now. If you want a helmet which has a full visor front, which is actually not dissimilar to the cask. And I think cask are recognizing that the fully blunted shape is not necessarily the best for the pro rider. Because in 2016, they've just announced the cask Bambino Evo, which has, a, which has a slightly extended rear, not the fully blunted rear. Now, if you go for a fully vented, one of the newer aero helmets like uh, Park Octal or one of the other uh, very new helmets, then you're getting about half of the advantage of the full teardrop helmet compared to the standard road helmet. By the way, that's not dissimilar to theoretically wearing no helmet at all, but wearing a very tight fitting cap. For example, a uh, Lycra hat or a silicon, even a silicon swim hat, but not, not a beanie hat. That's not going to work for aerodynamic efficiency. So on one, hand, on one hand, we've got your regular road helmet. Then we've got this new spectrum of aero road helmet. Then we've got the more rounded everyday aero helmet. And then we've got your full teardrop. So the last question then is how to choose between them. Well, actually, this is not as difficult as it sounds. First of all, they've all passed safety tests. And I believe they're all approximately the same on safety. There was a time in the 80s and 90s where safety wasn't a major factor. But remember, from 2003, when the UCI mandated helmets in pro cycling. They've all had to pass these standard safety measures. And you can see our other video on cycling helmet safety here. No, the main differences are the degree of venting, which adds to comfort, whether they have a visor or no visor, 
whether they're teardrop or, or partial, and, and for the very serious rider, how well do they fit? So we've been talking a lot about the theoretical CDA savings, but remember the actual CDA savings depends on how the exact helmet mates with the exact rider. In other words, if you're going for full aerodynamic efficiency, you want a helmet that perfectly fits the contours of your body and makes your body as streamlined as possible. Basically, it diminishes that void between the head and the shoulders. The reason these helmets are working at all is because the head is fairly aerodynamic as a kind of sphere. And this, and this was proven in 1998 by Marcus Pintani, who was one of several riders who used to ride with an entirely shaved head. Now, actually, the shaved bald head, although it's illegal in UCI events, is better than a traditional road helmet, but it's not as good as a full aero helmet. And the reason is the aero helmet fills the gap between the head and the shoulders. Effectively, the head and the shoulders are modeling a sphere and a rectangle or cube in a wind tunnel. The sphere and the cube stuck together is not as good as I'll show you here, a bullet shape or even better, an aerofoil shape. So that's the reason they're working. So in terms of which helmet is best for you, the honest truth is, although I can tell you, you know, which one is more vented and which one is slightly lighter than another, the key thing is not those minuscule differences in weight. It's the key thing is how it fits your body. And that's why the best thing to do is to go for a fitting. Now, the other option, if you don't have the resources to go for a professional fitting, is to trial them yourself, but have a look in the mirror, or even better, to get somebody to take photos of you from the side, from the front, and from the back. So get somebody to take pictures of you from all angles, but have a look at that front view. Now, you're not just looking at the amount of space taken up by the helmet, but you're looking at what happens in your TT position. Take a picture from the side also. Have a look if there's a smooth angle between the head and the shoulders and further um, move your head into typical positions that you would have riding. So not just in the full TT position, but sitting up on the bars and looking down. So the head is the, the head and the helmet sticking up in the air. Have a look at the position. That way you're gonna get a very good heads up, excuse the pun, on how well does that helmet suit you. And really that's the ultimate way to decide between these helmets. Okay, so in summary, there's lots of choices on the market from your classical road helmet, your aero road helmet, your full teardrop um, TT helmet to your rounded TT helmets. But the truth is this is an expensive sector of the market. But a little tip for you guys is the winter season is a good time to buy. This Cask Bambino came out in 2012 and the full RRP was $400 when it came out. I got this helmet online for $40 second hand and it had no big structural problems. It was just missing its visor. I mean, even at the cheap end of the market, the Gyro Advantage 2, that's often on sale for around, for around $80 to $100 brand new. And helmets like this, this cat-like Chrono, which is often unpopular because people are preferring these rounded helmets now, but this cat-like Chrono happens to fit me perfectly and give me the best aerodynamic advantage. I got this second hand for around $60, and this is really the perfect helmet for me. Although for everyday riding, I prefer this cat-like Rapide, or possibly the Cask Bambino with a decent pair of goggles. Okay, that's it on TT Helmets, guys. I hope that was useful. As ever, pick the right product for you. Don't just go and ride what your friend is riding. Do some research, listen to the science, listen to the evidence. Okay, have fun guys. Take care.